Well, we've just come through an election campaign where immigration was one of the important issues. The political parties have differing views on how many immigrants Canada should take in and what kind of immigrants they should be. But a new report out today says there really is no debate. The report by the Nonprofit Century Initiative says Canada needs a population of 100 million people by the year 2100 or our standard of living could plummet. And that uh, the car target population can only be reached through major increases in immigration levels. Goldie Hyder is the CEO of the Business Council of Canada and an executive member of the Century Initiative. Goldie Hyder, good to see you again. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Start by telling us briefly about the Century Initiative. What do people know about this organization? What do we need to know about it? You know, your audience is a sophisticated one, so let me remind them that when you know, Laurier made this famous statement, the 20th century belongs to Canada, it felt fantastic, I'm sure, but it didn't happen. And the reason it didn't happen is, is there was no plan. And we're living in an era where really, uh, you know, our, unfortunately, our business and our politics is all about short term these days, right? It's, it's kind of like the quarterly analysis, if you will. But we need a plan for the long term. We owe that first and foremost to all of those who came before us and secondly to all of those who are going to come after us. And so what we're trying to do is, is essentially say here's a, a long-term vision for the country, probably the most unselfish thing you can do knowing that you'll be dead, you won't even know if it's going to be realized or not, certainly in my case. But we want to make sure that we, we provide an opportunity for the quality of life and standard of living to be improving. And Peter, as you well know, uh, we're not in a position today to say, in fact, we're in a position to say we're going to be the first generation that's probably not going to be leaving behind for our children and grandchildren a society better than we found it. Yet everybody before us somehow managed to do that. And so we want to draw attention that there is a responsibility that comes with wanting to make sure that the country that we've built is sustainable uh, and that the people here are able to enjoy what it means to be a Canadian as we have. And that's what this initiative is all about. Okay, so uh, let's drill down on there's, there's 10 recommendations here on how to, how to uh, ensure that we have population growth and that we have, uh, this, you know, we maintain a high standard of living and a competitiveness with the rest of the world. So by 2023, Canada uh, will have an immigration target of 370,000 newcomers a year under current uh, policies. What level are you proposing to get us to a population of 100 million by 2100? Well, here's the thing. If you'd asked me that question a couple of years ago, the number would have been about 450 a year. But every year that we delay getting to the right number, that, that number goes up. Now I'm saying to you it's probably closer to 475 a year. But it's not a million a year. It's not two million a year. And people freak out to some extent at that number, 100 million. Let me put it to you in context. From 1918 till 2000, so that, that over that period, our right. population increased a multiple of 3.7 times. So let's just say hypothetically, you know, 10, 11 million became 30 plus million. Today at 37 million, to get to 100 million in 2100, in, the multiple is only 2.7 times. So it is actually an unambitious goal. It is not scary. We have done it before. We have done it more in the past than we're even asking us to do today. But the thing is, we need a plan. We need to make sure that we don't lose that support for immigration. We are all immigrants in some way, shape, or form. Immigration has worked for the country. But we need to recognize that Canada is not immune from these global forces that are taking place. So we want to have an honest conversation with Canadians that says, look, there are many of you here already who are underutilized. We want to have a plan for you. We want to make sure that women who are underutilized, people with disabilities who are, who are underutilized, uh, immigrants already here who are underutilized, Indigenous communities that are underutilized. Let's make sure we get them fully functional in our economy to maximum capacity. Because you know what's going to happen when that happens? We're still going to fall short for the labor and the talent that we need to grow our right, economy. So your, your, your point is that, your point is that uh, I mean, and, and I urge people to read the report, uh, your, your point is that uh, immigration is just one part of it. And it's a key part yes. of it. But the idea is that, look, there's, there's stuff we're not doing uh, with people who are already in the country in terms of maximizing Correct. employment opportunities. But, you know, as you, you touched on it uh, a little bit, uh, Mr. Hyder, you know, there is this, I, mean, I guess, I put, let me put it this way. Have we do, done a good enough job in making this economic argument to Canadians about the value of immigration? Because it's come down to, uh, I'm worried about my job. I'm worried about uh, settlement infrastructure. I'm worried about my, my kids' future and losing all uh, these jobs to people that are coming to Canada from other countries. Have we done a, a good enough job explaining to people what's really at stake here? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, first of all, I will say that you know, in, in the backdrop of the election that just was, if there's a positive development that happened in an election that many people were not enthralled with, I'm certainly not one of them, 
uh, immigration did not turn out to be a hot button political issue. And I think we should all be pleased with that. The Canadians took the high road on this issue and recognized that immigration is far too important, far too central. Just as an anecdote, by 2025, a hundred percent of our GDP growth is going to be coming from immigration. So it is the, the core requirement to be able to do all of the things that you've just raised, which brings me to the second point. You need a growing economy to be able to sustain the infrastructure, particularly the social programs and the social infrastructure that we have. Now, what we're suggesting is we also need to think differently. We need to think big. We need to be bold. We need to look at Canada not as 10 countries, uh, 10, um, uh, some people say 10 countries abroad, but 10 provinces and, and three territories. We should really start thinking of ourselves in the future as how do we build some mega regions? Because mega regions, mega cities is how the world is breaking down now. And we can compete with that. And that includes the North. It includes Quebec. It includes the Maritimes. We need to think strategically about how to build a country that can be environmentally conscious, that can build the public infrastructure, that can sustain the social programs. And, and as I said, the only way to do that now is to grow your population, to grow your economy, because we're not Switzerland. The, the, the critics will say, well, why can't we just do what the Swiss do? Have you looked at a map recently? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, I, I guess in the few uh, seconds we have left here, uh, the bottom line is you, you make a, a compelling argument for why this needs to take place, but it seems to me that it's not the first time you've made it. This is a number of years now the Century Initiative has been talking about the need to do this, and yet it seems to, uh, it seems to, to uh, the, the arguments you're making here seem to time and again uh, lose to the political argument. Nobody seems to want to bite this bullet, and I guess... Well, in fairness... How, in fairness, this government did, right? This, the previous yeah, government did the actually rate. increase levels. Yeah, they've raised the rates, right. but not, not the way you're talking. I mean, and, and do you think inevitably this is where we head up? That it may, take, it may not be on the timetable, you hope, but at some point, maybe 10 years from now, political leaders are going to realize, look, uh, there's no point talking about this anymore. We have to, let, uh, we have, to have a much higher immigration uh, level, and we have to do a whole lot more domestically uh, to try and uh, make sure people are, uh, more people are part of the workforce, uh, we are doing the right things with cities and the right things with infrastructure. I do think so. Uh, it takes leadership, Peter, and that's one of the things that we are trying to provide is to say, let's have these honest conversations. I trust the good judgment of Canadians. I know there are issues. There are issues in Quebec. There are issues around culture. There are issues around, you know, the, the, what kind of a society will we have if we just, you know, and an impact on the environment. Let's have the conversation. I, I believe Canadians are sensible people. They recognize that we owe it to our children and our grandchildren to make sure that we leave behind a society better than we found it. This is one way of doing it. All right, Goldie Hyder, always a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks for your time today. Likewise. Thank you, Peter. All the best.